Who Among Us doesn't love spotting a totally ridiculous mistake in a movie. Filmmaking is so damn hard that it's frankly impressive that there aren't more mistakes in most films. Yet every so often a mistake will emerge that, for one reason or another, transitions into canon. And with that in mind, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are 10 movie mistakes that became canon. Number 10. Mrs. TV doesn't know her music. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. An oft-cited mistake in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory occurs when Willy Wonka himself plays a tune on the keyboard to open the door to his chocolate room. A musical piece which Mrs. TV confidently identifies as a Rachmaninoff. But as it turns out, Wonka wasn't actually playing a Rachmaninoff composition at all, but rather Mozart's overture to the marriage of Figaro. It's a gaffe that surely flew over the heads of most young viewers, myself included, though some adults familiar with classical music have often pointed out the supposed error. Yet on the film's DVD commentary, it was actually clarified that this wasn't really a mistake at all. It was simply intended to demonstrate Mrs. TV's know-it-all personality that she's not nearly as smart and worldly as she evidently thinks she is. Ironically, it also ends up making those who point it out as a mistake seem a little overconfident in their own powers of observation, given that they missed that it was actually supposed to indicate this about the character. Though it's been parroted as a mistake for literally decades at this point, those in the know have made it abundantly clear that this character is the ignorant one, not author screenwriter Roald Dahl. Number nine, Rocky's oversized robe, Rocky. You'd be forgiven for letting out a little chuckle when you first see Rocky Balboa in his distinctive red boxing robe at the end of Rocky, ahead of his clash with heavyweight boxing world champion Apollo Creed. The robe's clearly way too big for star Sylvester Stallone and gives the impression of someone basically playing dress up in their dad's gear. And as it turns out, this was a legitimate error on the part of the film's costume department with an oversized robe accidentally being delivered to set. Without any backup costume or any means to get it altered before shooting, Stallone made the executive decision to work the wardrobe malfunction into the plot, resulting in a cute little moment when Rocky asks Adrian, you don't think this robe looks too baggy, you know? Ultimately though, it only enhances Rocky's status as the underestimated underdog. I mean, if this guy doesn't even have a robe that fits him, how could he possibly go the distance against Apollo Creed? Sometimes the happiest accidents end up creating the most organic movie moments. Number 8. The Overlook Hotel's Impossible Geography the Shining. Stanley Kubrick maintains a reputation as one of the most meticulous and detail-orientated filmmakers who has ever lived, such that any notable mistakes in his films are more often than not entirely intentional, well-thought-out decisions. Case in point, many have pointed out over the years that the iconic Overlook Hotel in The Shining doesn't make much sense in terms of spatial geography. We get considerable glimpses of the hotel's layout throughout the horror classic, yet anyone who actually tries to map the Overlook will soon realize that, as seen in the film, there are doors that can't feasibly lead anywhere. In the hands of a lesser filmmaker, this might seem like just a colossal oversight, but coming from the pathologically fastidious Kubrick, it's probably unlikely that it's a gaff. Though Kubrick didn't ever confirm this himself during his lifetime, it is largely accepted among fans now that he chose to intentionally present the Overlook as incoherent and disorientating to further generate a mood of eeriness and uncertainty. Number 7. Simon Skinner Breaks the Fourth Wall Hot Fuzz. It's simply a matter of practicality that filmmakers can't catch every single mistake during shooting. And in the case of Hot Fuzz, director Edgar Wright didn't notice that the great Timothy Dalton briefly eyeballed the camera during one scene. When Dalton's smug villain Simon Skinner proposes a toast to the newly dead Martin and Eve, for a few fractions of a second, his eyes actually dart into the sightline of the camera lens, ensuring that he locks fleeting eyes with the audience. On the film's DVD commentary, Wright pointed this out and added that he originally considered using visual effects to correct Dalton's gaze, but ultimately decided that it would be funnier to turn it into a meta moment instead. And so Wright had his sound team add the sound of a cash register clinking in the background to draw greater attention to it. And considering that Skinner is basically outing himself as a villain throughout the entire scene, it is pretty hilarious, if initially unintended, that he basically ends up winking at the audience for a tiny sliver of screen time. Number 6. All the editing mistakes. Shutter Island. Shutter Island is easily one of Martin Scorsese's most mainstream skewing movies, if not his absolute most. So it tracks that it's also this film that's been put under the most scrutiny for being filled with so-called mistakes. In fact, also many armchair continuity supervisors online have called the film out for its uncharacteristically rough editing, most often pointing out the sequence where US Marshals Teddy and Chuck interview a patient at Ashcliff Hospital, Bridget Kearns. In one shot, Kearns is seen drinking a cup of water, except there's no glass in her 
hand if you look closely. Yet in the next shot, it is actually visible. Even if you very generously assume that Scorsese was going to CGI the glass into the shot later on for some reason, isn't it far more plausible that this was a case of a master filmmaker collaborating with his equally masterful editor of more than 50 years, by the way, to straight up screw with the audience? Considering that there are other strange editing and continuity choices through the film, it was clearly a case of Scorsese trying to keep audiences on their toes while approximating Teddy's own slipping sanity. Number five, the talkative extra, Star Trek IV The Voyage Home. Star Trek IV The Voyage Home is just one hell of a wild movie, revolving around the Enterprise's crew traveling back through time to 1986 San Francisco. The characters are all portioned off into their own respective subplots, with Uhura and Chekhov being tasked with finding a nuclear reactor that will let them return to the 23rd century. And it's at this point we cue a hilarious skit where the duo start asking random locals how they can locate the nuclear vessels. Though the extras in the area were under strict instructions not to speak to the pair but simply keep walking, one extra evidently didn't get the memo. This extra, Leila Saracalo, decided to shoot her shot in the moment, telling the pair, I don't know if I know the answer to that. I think it's across the bay in Alameda. And if you look closely at the actors in this scene, you can definitely see their genuine surprise at her response. Yet ever the pros, they managed to keep in character with the response themselves. Ultimately, director Leonard Nimoy liked this contribution, and so the small but memorable interaction was actually kept in the film. Number four, the anachronistic period detail, the village. M. Night Shyamalan's wildly divisive The Village was dinged for many things upon release, and for anyone paying attention while they were watching it the first time, they might have had a few criticisms about the production and costume design. See, while viewing it without any prior knowledge of its inevitable plot twist, you might be a bit mystified by the noticeably contemporary buildings built from materials only used since the 1950s, despite the film itself allegedly being set in a 19th century village. Furthermore, many items of clothing worn throughout by the commune characters shouldn't have existed until around 1970, and during the first hour of the movie, you'd be forgiven for just thinking that Shyamalan simply got lazy where the finer details were concerned. Yet, that was all proven hilariously, if bafflingly wrong, in the third act, when we learn that the village itself actually exists within the present day, providing a plausible reason for the period inaccurate buildings and clothes. Number three, Joel can't shoot arrows, Adam's Family Values. The Adam's Family Values is a stone cold masterpiece of a comedy sequel and in recent years seems to finally be getting its due. Now admittedly not everything in the shoot went quite according to plan, though in this case it did end up only making one scene that much funnier. See, the film features a legendary subplot in which Wednesday and Pugsley are sent to a chirpy summer camp, where Wednesday meets a similarly unenthusiastic outcast called Joel Glicker. Among the many camp activities the trio are forced to participate in, they're made to shoot arrows, resulting in Joel growing frustrated as he struggles to load and fire his arrow instead of just throwing it on the ground. Now this throwing it on the ground wasn't part of the initial script however, as the actor was apparently not much of a practically minded kid either and couldn't load the arrow for real and amidst his struggle got legitimately annoyed and just threw it on the ground. This apparently generated uproarious laughter on the set, enough that director Barry Sonnenfeld decided to use it in the film. Number 2. Lando mispronounces Han's name, Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. For literally more than 40 years at this point, Star Wars fans have wondered why Lando Calrissian just can't seem to pronounce his uneasy pal Han Solo's name correctly, which by the way I've since learned I've also been doing my entire life. See, in The Empire Strikes Back, Lando pronounces Han as if to rhyme with can, no matter that Han himself pronounces it to rhyme with non, essentially. <laughs> oh, not in my accent. Now many at the time simply pawned it off as actor Billy D. Williams offering up his own eccentric interpretation of the name, and because Empire was directed by Irvin Kirshner rather than George Lucas, there perhaps wasn't the same impetus to correct it. But nearly four decades on, fans finally had the pronunciation error fully canonized in Solo A Star Wars Story. See, in this prequel, Han and Lando meet for the first time during a game of Sabacc, where Lando mocks Han's incorrect pronunciation of the name. But moments later, Lando then gets Han's name wrong himself, which of course goes commented on. It's a cute little moment that demonstrates the origin of Lando's weird pronunciation and his ongoing refusal to say it right, which again, I can totally vibe with. Number one, Hal's incorrect chess play. 
2001 A Space Odyssey. Throughout the years, chess fans have periodically pointed out to an alleged mistake when Dr. Frank Poole plays the Discovery One sentient computer HAL 9000 at chess in Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. In the scene, HAL wins by persuading Poole to resign the game after pointing out his future moves. But if you're much of a chess player, which admittedly I definitely am not, you might have noticed that HAL actually describes an incorrect set of moves. HAL says Queen to Bishop 3 when he should have said Queen to Bishop 6, yet the latter move would have allowed Poole to stay in the game a little longer. Now, is it easy to believe that Kubrick, himself an avid chess player, didn't think fellow chess lovers would notice, or is it more likely that he included Hal's error intentionally? After all, it's easy to interpret Hal's mistake as both a sign of his impending malfunction and him testing his ability to deceive the astronauts even at something as comparatively trivial as a chess game. While chess fans might want to hold onto this one as a mistake, knowing Kubrick and his deliberate mindset as we do, it's basically accepted as canon today that Hal intentionally cheated. He is, after all, putting it mildly, a little rascal. So that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Did you notice these so-called movie mistakes and are there any other ones that are wrongly identified that wind you up as well? Let me know and while you're down there, if you could, please give us a like, share, subscribe and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't though, I've been Josh. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon.